Okay, interesting market. Once again, a bit for dichotomy. But the bank Nifty is the one which is surging courtesy Kotak Mahindra Bank and HDFC Bank. But uh, the rest of the market sulking a bit, especially in the mid caps. This is closing well. I am Anuj with me. Here's Surabhi. Hi, Surabhi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Anuj. So, yeah, I, mean, I think mid session we had a bit of a scare because mm. uh, there was a dip well below uh, 11,000. I think uh, 10,950 thereabouts was our low. From there, we've bounced. Mm. Uh, what does this kind of leave the picture? Look, uh, you know, the way the market has shaped up today mm. is very interesting. I think if you see the bank nifty's contribution, there's absolutely no doubt about it that a lot of money is now moving from corporate banks right into the two biggest uh, and the best retail banks, mm. which is HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank. Mm. HDFC Bank has contributed 95 points. Kotak Mahindra Bank has contributed 70 points. This at a time when the PSU banks are making lows of the day. I'm just trying to think, you know, what could that mean logically? A day after RBI's monetary policy. Mm. Remember, we were making this point that, okay, rate cut is fine, but is there going to be transmission? Now, is there some kind of sort of uh, a pressure on PSU banks, perhaps to transmit the rate cut? Uh, and that's why, you know, uh, that would mean, of course, a bit of a hit for some of these PSU banks. But at the same time, that means uh, good news for, you know, the, the stronger banks uh, and stronger retail banks like, mm. uh, you know, Kotak and uh, HDFC Bank. To me, I think that's, that's you know, one way of looking at things. That's, you know, logically, that's the only explanation that I have for this kind of move that you've seen a day after the policy. And this move on Kotak and HDFC Bank is really big, I mean, in the context of the market. Otherwise, the rest of the market is still sulking, Surabhi. Uh, I think the mid-caps are back to, you know, seeing decline once again, one is to two on advanced decline. But uh, let's see, last hour could be really crucial because at, it looks like at least on the on the bank nifty, you've successfully defended the 20-day moving average. In the morning, we were talking about that that mark, uh, 27,250 thereabout would be the first zone. Uh, that That's where uh, support should be. Uh, looks like for now, that's been defended. On the nifty, the jury is out on whether this is a retest of 10,980 or is this some kind of mini breakdown. We'll find out, of course. Okay, well, on the mid-cap side, uh, there are lots of result reactions that are playing out as well. So, you've had some disappointments like VIP, for instance. That stock's been down about uh, 3 to 4%. Union uh, Bank, we're talking about PSU banks, largely speaking, uh, a lot of the PSU banks are on the lower side. Uh, Yuko Bank came out with another disastrous set of numbers. And then there's Union on the PSU side. Uh, so, this is a weak set. Uh, the other interesting facet, of course, has been the volatility around the ADAG group again. Mm. Uh, you know, Anuj, it's, it's a little bizarre because just a while back we had that statement where the Anil Ambani group of companies, when mm. most of them, have issued the statement alleging that it's illegal what LNT Finance have done and, and other people who are holding the pledge, what they've done is illegal. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just been a sort of messy back and forth on this. When you lose thousands of crores, you know, you will obviously have uh, have that issue. But mm. I think uh, more than that, remember in the morning we're making this point on perhaps Reliance Capital. Uh, mm. uh, you know, the, it, it, over the last three or four days, the amount of selling that we were seeing in this, these stocks, it was clear that some amount of pledge was being sold into the market. Mm. You know, when stocks fall 30-40% intraday, it's because someone's selling you know, lock, stock and barrel and uh, mostly pledged shares. Uh, so that was uh, no. Now, of course, uh, I'm sure LNT Finance and Edelweiss, uh, they are also large NBFCs. I'm sure they'll have their legal defense as well. And from their point of view, uh, you know, uh, let us see how things move here. But the short point here is that at least in the near term, uh, the selling pressure did get abated. Though having said that, uh, you know, this space still remains vulnerable. There's, you know, mm -hmm. vulnerability to second round of selling in most of these stocks. But yes, for the near term, there was a bit of a bounce, perhaps unexpected lens. Okay, well, on that note, let's uh, get started. Here's what's lined up this Friday on Closing Bell. The market has been under pressure all through the day, but it is off the lowest point of the session. Uh, the Nifty Bank has been outperforming its peers, led higher by uh, HTC Bank as well as Kotak Mahindra Bank. NBFC stocks like Indibles Housing and DHFL have had a weak session. On the earnings front, Tata Motors has been the key loser of the day on the back of that slam dunk that we got in the third quarter fine print. M&M has reported a mixed set of numbers, revenues in line, margins specifically for the auto segment have come in below estimates. We're going to be discussing a lot of these trends with the experts. Uh, we will have Mr. S.P. Tulsian of sptulsian.com joining in, Amrish Baliga. And we'll also have Nishal Maheshwari joining in from Centrum today. Now, the market is flirting around the 11,000 level. What does this mean? Is the mid-cap bear market over? How do you look at a portfolio construction for the next couple of months? We put that question to Tahir Badshah, 
who heads investments at Invesco Mutual Fund. He's our alpha manager of the day. And of course, as always, lots of trading ideas coming your way with Ashuni Gujral and Mitesh Thakkar. Okay, in fact, uh, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? We have Ashwini and Mitesh now joining us. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ashwini, bit of a dichotomy between Nifty and the Bank Nifty. And even within Bank Nifty, uh, you have HDFC Bank and Kotak uh, leading the index. Uh, your thoughts for last hour and, of course, your stock calls. Well, uh, for, for the day, you can say that, uh, you know, the retest is probably successful and uh, 10, 950, 960 held on. So chances are people went short at that point. Those guys will cover. Kotak Mahindra, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's solving its uh, stake sale issue or something because the kind of strength it tends to show each time, you know, Bank Nifty is down is uh, quite extraordinary. So my sense is that uh, maybe Bank Nifty uh, could lead from here, but uh, overall the market breadth, etc., just means that maybe 10, 950 to uh, 11, 150, a 200 point range could be forming because it's hardly two banks which are keeping the market uh, above water. Plus, Dow Jones futures, which were down 100 odd points, they have cut their losses in half. So, possibly global markets. Uh, are quiet for the uh, for the day so my sense is that uh, you know you should get into banks and maybe uh, the bank nifty can have a bit more of a rally from here individual stocks uh, you can uh, buy into a, an hdfc bank that's a buy with a stop of 2120 target of 2175 kotak is a buy with a stop of 1285 target of 1340 and uh, Biocon is a buy with a stop of uh, 655, target of uh, 680. It's fair to say that uh, yesterday and today's shots have probably not gotten enough follow through. So last hour uh, could be interesting because of the short covering it can attract. Okay, so going with three buys, that is uh, Ashwini's list. Two of them are banking names. Good afternoon, Mitesh. How do you read the picture today? Bulls have managed to get back to 11,000. Uh, on the index, what are you doing? And of course, uh, what about stocks? Uh, good afternoon, Sruti. So I think uh, the fall which happened during the noon time kind of stopped around the 10,950-960 zones. And uh, it was an intraday violation of 10,960-odd uh, levels. But I think still constitutes as more of a pullback. So today's low becomes a stop loss for any long positions. And I think uh, that's what we have uh, advised. Uh, looking at 11,100 as the first target, which was the recent high, and once we cross that 11,200, 250 remains the main target area. I have uh, one buy <coughs> and one sell call. Kotak Bank features on my list as well. Buy with a stop at 1289 for targets of 1335. It's moved up slightly, so maybe around 3 4 point dip could be a good buy. And Bank of Brother is a sell with a stop at 108 half for targets of 101. Okay, <clears throat> fair enough. Uh, Kotak really has been the strongest stock of the day today. Uh, and back to that 1300 mark, uh, it's been a strong rally, of course, uh, for the stock. Uh, S.P. Tulsian of S.P. Uh, is with us and so is Amrish Paliga. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Mr. Tulsian, your thoughts first on Mahindra and Mahindra. You reckon there's enough punishment for the stock now? I, I mean, even though the numbers prima facie didn't look that great, but perhaps street taking heart from the fact that there was no fresh negative and the guy, you know, the guidance been not cut any further uh, at 700, is the risk reward good enough? Yes, and your risk reward is seem to be quite favorable in favor of the stock, and I, I, you are you are right in, in in saying that because if you see the Q Q3 numbers, again the same story. You know, the farm equipment has really saved the day because closure to about 900 crore a bit, which we have seen from that division, and that is going to really do quite well. Though on a relative basis, we have I have always held that escorts he seem to be doing well. But uh, Mahindra and Mahindra has the advantage of the size, you know, which is almost three times of what escorts is, is, is presenting on the, on the tractor sales. And going forward, if you take the call on the Mahindra and Mahindra, you know, having shown very good numbers from Tech Mahindra and Mahindra and Mahindra is seen to be the, the, the investment company, you know, other group investments as well is giving them an advantage. So yes, overall, and if you see the new models having launched in the PV space also is giving, is going in favor of the Mahindra and Mahindra. And I, I think that maybe things are seen returning back even for the PV sector or PV cycle as well. In fact, CV cycle, we are keeping quite positive view for 2019 because of the BS6 norms and you know because of the scrappage policy and all sort of things 
and even PV cycle seem to have bottomed out. So I think going overall on, uh, uh, for, for for the for the Mahindra and Mahindra, they seem to be having you know, on a better footing with stocks seen having bottomed out. Okay, that's uh, one view on Mahindra and Mahindra. Amrish Balika is also with us. Uh, good afternoon, Amrish. Good afternoon. I'll stick to auto. You probably guessed my next question. <laughs> Are you catching this falling knife, Tata Motors? Uh, see, I mean, I would say that uh, possibly one should wait, not to really try and catch this falling knife. Uh, but then at the same time, we should remember that I think the worst is already, is, is in fact getting built into Tata Motors because if you see the last five, six quarters, it's been the same. Uh, and uh, again, I should not be talking technically, but technically, uh, if, uh, I mean, there, there seems to be a decent support at this 145, 150, it's, it's uh, tested that earlier. So if it holds on at these levels, and uh, if people have Tata Motors where your average price is say 300, 350 plus, I think it's possibly a good time to average out because end of the day, if it was some other group, I may not have said this, but being the Tata group, I think one can take a chance at about 150 levels. Okay, one can take a chance at 150 is uh, the call from Ambrish. Uh, Mr. Tulsin, your thoughts on the way we have seen this relentless selling today in PSU banks? Uh, I mean, and even as we speak, uh, the market's well off the low point or the bank nifty is, but PNB is now down 5%, uh, syndicate is down 6%, union bank is down 6%, even the big boy SBI is uh, is, is down, uh, I mean, SBI of course down uh, much less, but still down about one third of 1%. See, it's difficult to take a call, but whatever I could be able to c connect these dots or maybe the find, I'll try to find out the reasons for the fall, that after the 25 basis point rate cut yesterday, you know, in fact, I've said this in the morning also, that probably it will be finding difficult for the PSU banks to mobilize the deposits because now we have seen the competition seen happening practically. All the private sector banks are offering the higher rate of interest, maybe in their savings accounts and in their term, term deposits while nothing has been done by the, by the PSU banks. And they have all, as such, you know, been struggling for credit growth because on one hand, they may be forced to cut the lending rates and on the other hand they may not be able to mobilize the deposit so probably the credit growth hit you know which is seen feared and and actually ahead of this uh, policy meet or maybe in this last about couple of weeks we have seen the psu bank stocks you know having gone up uh, in, in in many of the cases maybe like bank of baroda after the swap ratio having announced or maybe bank of india oriental bank of commerce having come out of the pcl list so maybe probably that, that, that could be the reason. So taking the, the, the call now on all PSU banks, probably you have the comfort only on SBI going forward at this, at this stage. And that's the reason people are in fact taking more shift on the private sector banks like HDFC and Kota. Mm, okay. Uh, Mr. Tulsan, some more numbers from the day. Uh, some of the major ones uh, that, that we looked at, VIP. Top line growth was good, 27%, but uh, the stock is still not enthused enough. Uh, anything else that came to your mind? GSPL was slightly weakish. So I think Gujarat gas numbers, you know, look look little better. But I don't think that market is really seen responding. In fact, GSPL has been seen some some kind of disappointment. But I think that overall the numbers have, uh, uh, though there have not been much 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 results, you know, seen coming in. But maybe Gujarat gas numbers are seen to be quite reasonably better. Okay, but Amrish, your thoughts on uh, this uh, press release from ADAG Group? Uh, talking about uh, you know the action of LNT Finance and Edelweiss as as illegal. Uh, uh, I mean, how would you? Uh, no, because see, that? whenever things like these happen, uh, I mean, you'll have the promoters crying foul. We have seen that happening with a couple of uh, I mean other stocks and groups. Uh, I mean earlier, uh, but then uh, I mean I, I doubt whether anyone will really believe. Uh, uh, I mean, whatever the promoters are talking about right mm. now, and uh, I think uh, overall. Uh, I mean, this uh, story overall seems to be over. And uh, what we have seen happening with uh, a couple of other groups like uh, the PC Jewelers or the Vakrangi, I think, I mean, this group is heading towards, the, I mean, uh, like, like those levels. So I think, I mean, any sort of a bounce back should be utilized to exit because, I mean, I know a lot of people have entered uh, uh, like Reliance Communications or Reliance Power when it fell uh, sharply, mm -hmm. hoping for a bounce back. But then whatever bounce back we get is basically a dead cat bounce and clearly it is headed lower. Okay, yes, a lot of value destruction is what we've seen on uh, many of these stocks of the ADAG group. Uh, by the way, lots of weakness on uh, metal names today as well. Vedanta, for instance, is down 6% now. Tata Steel, of course, is quite nervous ahead of its numbers, 3% lower as well. Sandeep, last day of the week, last half an hour almost of trade. What are you doing? 
afternoon surbi i would go with one sell and one buy i see some profit booking at higher levels and i don't see a one way crackdown though a sell in a ujjivan financial services stop loss of 278 target 258 and a buy in a kotak bank stop loss 1290 target 1340 Okay, <coughs> Sandeep, uh, thanks a lot for those trading ideas. Couple of uh, interesting stock moves right now. One is MRF. Uh, now, yesterday it had come out with numbers. Obviously, uh, the numbers were below estimate. There's been a bit of an issue with the margin for most tire companies, but that stock's been consistently making lows uh, and just made the low of the day. And the other stock, which is quite interesting right now, it's in F and O band, is Adani Enterprises. Just pull out that stock. It's moved to the high point of the day, so uh, that's uh, also quite interesting. On Adani Enterprises, uh, uh, Bajaj Finance is the other one which is making uh, very decent moves. Twenty-seven uh, forty-five now on uh, on uh, Bajaj Finance. So one point three percent higher is what you have on on that stock. So let's see. Uh, BML is the other one, by the way, which is making a bit of a move right now. So BML as well, uh, make uh, you know inching up in trade. Uh, uh, Mr. Zain, uh, thoughts on? Tata Steel now ahead of numbers. Uh, you know we've seen how JSW reacted, and uh, of course JSW is a completely different play. But uh, thoughts on Tata Steel? See, Anuj, again, I don't think that you can bank on Tata Steel except for their domestic operations, because if you take the call on their domestic uh, sales numbers, the two numbers can really get compared. That is JSW Steel and Steel Authority. In fact, Steel Authority sale have shown very good numbers yesterday, though the so it's not reflected into the stock price. And JSW maybe they have missed on the on the on the on the tar target production target production, but may not be so much on the margin. So there again, domestic operations will really be quite good on a standalone basis. Tata Steel because Bhushan is also seeing sure Bhushan Steel Tata, which is now Tata Steel BSL has also been showing consistent uh, improvement. But again, the problem will be from from their global operations, and it it will be the re repetition of the performance what we have seen for Tata Motors in in the morning. Also, I have said that Tata Motors is the seem to be the victim of JLR acquisition, and Tata Steel is seem to be the victim of uh, Corus acquisition made about a decade back. So I don't think that I have any, and that's the reason that in spite of having the positive view, having kept at at some point of time on ferrous metal stocks, we have not kept positive view on Tata Steel for the simple reason. So I'm not expecting much uh, relief on the on the on the consolidated numbers from Tata Steel. Okay, um, Amrish, let me get your thoughts in on this. I mean, generally speaking, steel is interesting because quarter on quarter prices have started coming off. Stocks have also come off quite substantially. Would you be a buyer in in anything in metal steel or even non-ferrous for that matter? In fact, maybe I was one of the first few guys who actually said, I think nearly ten mm -hmm. months back, that the metal cycle has mm -hmm. turned. I think that time. Tata Steel would have been closer to that 550, 560 level. That I had said, whenever it again bounces back to the 600 levels, uh, one should be looking at uh, exiting. So even at these levels, I would say there is still some way, uh, uh, some more way down. So uh, something like a Tata Steel, maybe one should look at it closer to about 400, 410. Again, assuming that the uh, that by then the cycle would have bottomed out. But I think that's uh, that's still uh, like some time away. Okay, uh, Mr. Sun. Before we thank you, just a word on Bharti Infrastructure. It's been the stock of the. I saw the year twenty five percent here, right? I mean, it's only one year, one month, and uh, just one week. See, Anuj, in this tw last two weeks, we have discussed on the stock twice, and I have said that in fact we are keeping extremely positive for the simple reason that the Indus uh, uh, merger is seen happening probably in next couple of months. We will be seeing Bharti Infratel in a new avatar, and there I have said that maybe about one lakh seventy five thousand tower. Because now, if you take the call of the Bharti Infratel, they are holding about 40-45 percent stake in that company. And the best part is that Bharti Airtel will will look to exit from because they have already been on record in saying that they will be monetizing their stake, which eventually they will be having about 32-33 percent in the merged entity. So I am in fact quite and in fact in, in fact if you see the Q3 numbers having posted by Bharti Infratel, they have given the consolidated picture also. Of the Indus having uh, you know merged as, as as a separate footnote, and that is seem to be giving quite positive view because even once the Bharti Airtel will exit, these kind of stakes will be acquired by the foreign uh, the foreign investors. And if you see even now the foreign uh, uh, investors holding is quite high in Bharti Infratel, and in fact they have the appetite for these kind of stocks. You know where we have been in fact seeing talk doing going on that Reliance Geo is also looking to monetize their fiber and tower. So this will be the best tower company where the maybe uh, 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 it will be treated as a foreign company with good uh, foreign promoter stake being held. 
by the by the by by the by the by the foreign investors. So yes, we are in fact keeping positive view, and in fact from here on probably this could be qualified as a portfolio stock to give a consistent return of about maybe 13, 13 to 15 percent on an annualized basis for next two or three years. Okay, that's EIL's number. Uh, not really. I mean, uh, okay, we we, we remove that flash, uh, uh, but uh, that the first number that flashed on this uh, screen was. Uh, quite, uh, I mean, uh, slightly below estimate, uh, that is the net profit number 90.8 crore. We had a poll of about 95 crores, so that is uh, on the number. The revenue is at uh, 577 uh, crore versus uh, 650 crores what you have on revenue front. There is another income component as well of 51.9 crores, so that is uh, uh, also pumping up the number, but uh, I mean, I, you know, uh, uh, the stock's down about almost four percent right now. If you take a look at the the margin number, the margin number is actually quite good. So perhaps uh, you know uh, the number is not that bad. Uh, in fact, uh, if you if you just pull out the uh, margin number because the revenue is fa falling short of the number by uh, a big number, but uh, a profit hasn't. In fact, uh, the EBITDA number is uh, is looking quite okay. So uh, that's uh, Engineers India. It's of course already fallen a lot. Uh, uh, Amrish, any thoughts on EIL? Uh, do you track it as a stock? Yeah, but then uh, again, uh, uh, if you're looking at the order book position, consistent flow mm -hmm. uh, of orders because of uh, the huge capex which is happening in the oil and gas space, all that is extremely positive for engineers in India. I think the mm -hmm. only issue would be whether the government would meddle with the cash lying in the books about buybacks. I think these are the things which are weighing on the PSU space overall. Otherwise, something like a EIL should be quoting at nothing less than 150, 160 levels. Yeah, I think that margin number is good. So that's uh, that explains why perhaps the fall has been arrested on the stock. 16% uh, uh, is the EBITDA margin uh, uh, versus uh, estimate, I think, was 15%. So yeah. that, that yeah. explains uh, why you've seen a bit of an intraday bounce. 16.4% versus a poll of 15%. Uh, uh, so 15, that's 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 the reason you're seeing. Yeah, the I mean, that's bounce. really, really solid. And despite uh, expenses shooting up quite dramatically year on year. So maybe, I mean, the guess is, Anisha was telling us earlier that uh, the street's fear was that in terms of your business mix, it'll be a higher share of turnkey orders, which fetch lower margin and a poor performance on consultancy. Maybe it's not been that mad, bad. Maybe the, the mix is more in favor of consultancy. And perhaps that could explain uh, this uh, margin performance. But some uh, some recovery from the lows, for sure after that number flashed by. That's EIL. Let's move forward and get the conversation going. Um, uh, we also, at this point in time, will thank Mr. Tulsi and thank you very much, sir, for being with us uh, this afternoon. Have a good weekend. We will see you with the markets on Monday again. Uh, on that note, uh, we will uh, move forward and welcome in our next guest on the show, uh, Alpha Manager of the Day, Tahir Bajra, CIO Equities at Invesco Mutual Fund, is joining in. Tahir, good afternoon. Thank you for being with us. You know, when I was uh, going across your funds, Hi, I, I, I saw the, the December fact sheet, couldn't find the Jan one, I don't think it's on the site. But uh, I want to start with autos because you have had marquee names like a Maruti, for instance, in some of your stocks. And that's the big debate on the street. Is this turning point? Is this the bottom? Or is there more pain left ahead for this really important sector of the market? So yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, you know, things are not uh, very smooth and uh, uh, it will be a little bit of a rocky path even to the recovery. So uh, especially up until, uh, uh, you know, till the time, let's say the sentiment remains a little challenged and uh, people are kind of obviously sitting on the fence for uh, a couple of events to pass by. But I think, uh, uh, so it might take a little bit of time for the recovery to set in. But in, in, in the process, I think many of these stocks have corrected quite uh, quite uh, meaningfully and uh, uh, we are on the watch out. I mean, we do have a position out there. We are probably looking to increase as and when uh, valuations kind of reflect more or less uh, 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 the bottom. It's never always, uh, never ever possible to call the bottom, but uh, uh, by and large, I mean, I think uh, even on reduced growth estimates, uh, still uh, some challenges remain on valuation. So I think uh, maybe over the next five, seven percent, uh, uh, five to 10 percent correction in many of these names, I think they will be at a stage where you can at least play them from the next couple of years perspective. Uh, you may have to still kind of bear the brunt over the next six or months for uh, sentiment to kind of get a little more even. Uh, enablers are kind of improving. So we've seen uh, the budget being a little more responsive. Uh, uh, we've seen a cut in interest rates. Maybe it may not be sufficient at this stage, but it's a good beginning. And probably some of these enable enablers, if they continue to remain uh, favorable, uh, oil prices included. Then I think it'll be a good, uh, 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 you know, uh, base from which uh, the auto sector can probably show revival. 
uh, over the next 12 odd months time. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> That's on autos. Uh, Thayer, hi, good afternoon. Uh, your thoughts on some of these consumption names? Uh, uh, we've seen a bit of a issue with the margin with uh, with, with some names, uh, uh, but uh, you you reckon this could still be the the leader for the market? Well, I think uh, I mean consumption. If we were to divide it into two parts, FMCG staples on one side, and then if you were to look at discretionary on the other side. So FMCG, I think um, many of the companies, uh, whatever has come to uh, light and their quarterly results, is that volume growths have not been. Too bad. Of course, this is a festive season kind of quarter, uh, so one needs to uh, bear that in mind. Uh, but nonetheless, I think trends have been kind of uh, fairly good from a volume growth perspective. Um, uh, the commentary that we hear from many of the managements uh, on the FMCG is that uh, you know event-based demand continues to be reasonably strong, but uh, non-event-based, when it is you know in general, the otherwise the sentiment of a general pull is relatively lesser. So uh, I think once again there uh, the recent uh, the recent budget. Uh, and uh, some of these um, enablers, both in the form of the DBT as well as interest rates, I think should kind of act as a as a booster as we go along. Uh, so that's what we probably look forward to. If we cut it to the consumer discretionary side, then uh, again trends have been quite mixed. Uh, but quite a number of these companies have kind of, in fact, benefited from a slightly benign raw material scenario, uh, where quite a number of companies have actually shown improvement in gross margins. Um, and uh, you know uh, that they have probably used to pass it down in the form of uh, either discounts or whatever. So you don't really see it as much in terms of their operating margins. But uh, clearly, as far as uh, uh, being able to you know benefit out of the benign raw material price scenario, that's clearly worked in their favor. So I think it's a bit of a mixed bag on both sides. But we need a lot more enablers to actually uh, uh, let demand uh, get a little stronger uh, outside of uh, you know festive season. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tahir, uh, just heard the policy and uh, we've got that rate card, though I think uh, there's still a lot of debate about whether that will really translate into lower cost of funds for the system as a whole and what that might mean for uh, financials. How are you looking at this space, uh, you know, starting first with the banks, uh, is the preference for corporate or are you, uh, you know, looking at a mix of both retail and corporate? Yes, so I agree that you know uh, uh, the just this one rate card will probably not be sufficient. Maybe we might need uh, one more, two more in order to probably you know, uh, and along with it, uh, we might probably even need a little bit of uh, liquidity support in the market. So the liquidity situation needs to ease so that you know there is a, at least some bit of the transmission effect which comes into play. Uh, till then, uh, currently uh, we are seeing a situation where uh, you know uh, banks will probably be while they are garnering uh, 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 de uh, deposits, but uh, Casa is relatively uh, kind of mixed to slightly weak. Uh, they can't, uh, 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 as of now, uh, you know, uh, easily transmit the benefit of uh, uh, lower interest rates in terms of their cost of funds. So I think uh, they will be a little more hungry towards uh, towards gathering more and more uh, uh, lives, and that's probably going to take a little bit of uh, cost up. So to that extent, uh, immediately to benefit out of this rate cut will be a little difficult. We'll need a little more of this plus liquidity to improve in order to for it to reflect on end demand. Uh, meanwhile, yes, I mean, we are broadly, uh, uh, from a portfolio perspective, we are evenly balanced between our exposure to uh, to private sector banks as well as a couple of the corporate sector banks. We've uh, we've been now owning corporate sector banks for more than a year now, and uh, to a good degree. So I don't think we have a. I mean, we still like the stories. We still think the journey in terms of their overall recovery valuations are still within control. So we continue to be quite overweight in some of these names. Okay. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, you know uh, after having seen uh, one accident from a Tata Group company in terms of uh, global stocks, uh, Tata Motors, the the market wants to go and it doesn't want to take any chance with Tata Steel. So that's why that stock is at the low point of the day. Of course, uh, different business, but uh, uh, you know the stocks now at uh, 473. It's recent 52-week low. And this is also a stock which has uh, made 52-week low uh, consistently over the last few uh, weeks. Uh, the 52-week low is 441. So that one also right now uh, seeing a bit of a uh, you know sentiment move perhaps. Uh, uh, Tahir, uh, your thoughts on metals uh, because uh, you know we had a big move. Uh, you you reckon that that cycle is well and truly turned now? So we really don't have uh, any heavy exposure to metals at all. In fact, none, so to speak, actually. So we we don't have any exposure to any of the front line. 
uh, metal commodity names. Uh, we at best have some converters and uh, you know uh, some small cap uh, ideas in this space, but uh, by and large we are absent uh, as far as the mid and large cap uh, uh, space goes. We we don't really right now we don't really think either uh, we have a great call on the cycle in any of these uh, commodities. Uh, uh, so to suggest that whether we are the top or the bottom, nor do we think that uh, valuations on either end are reflecting uh, whether they are at the top of the cycle or at the bottom of the cycle for us to be able to take a call on commodities. So from a commodity perspective, either you need to have it cheap enough so that you don't need to take a call on the cycle wherever you are in the cycle or then you need to uh, or otherwise you need to have a call on the cycle so that valuations don't matter. But right now we don't find either of the two. Uh, on which we are able to take a call and therefore we are by and large absent from this space across most of our strategies. By the way, the markets again dip below the 11,000 mark, 10,980. We still have half an hour to go. Let's just see how this closes out. But uh, yeah, there is pressure. You've got a almost uh, eight tenths of a percent drop again on the index. Let's uh, talk about some of the weak names. Uh, of course, your, some of the big boys like Reliance have been weak. HDFC has been on the way down as well. Um, uh, we haven't had much support from ITC or Lever for that matter today. So these stocks continue to be um, key drags. Tahir, for the market as a whole, I mean, we also got, for instance, the mutual fund data today, incidentally. Uh, numbers are still sobering. The monthly inflow numbers, I mean, at least are trying to stabilize at some 6,000 uh, odd crore T's now. What is the sense? I mean, this range, is it simply going to continue up till elections? Do you see a break on either side? Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's quite clear that uh, sentiment, uh, just like consumer sentiment on on uh, uh, on consumption related uh, uh, areas, uh, the way it is weak. Uh, similarly, there's a weakness here in terms of market sentiment as well, and market sentiments are essentially held up because of the event that we are uh, that uh, everybody is waiting for. So I think uh, that's what is by and large happening in the market, in, in, uh, and that's reflecting in the form of these uh, week of flows that we are seeing month on month. Uh, uh, so uh, I think this trend is likely to continue for a while. I mean, there's just no way we will be able to overcome this till the time this event is in front of us. Uh, but I would like to believe that irrespective of the outcome, then post which, I mean, if we get up, uh, uh, I think that is when you will probably see that breakout that we will once again start at least seeing a resumption of uh, better trends for, uh, for uh, good or bad, at least the event will be out of the way. So uh, that's how the market typically looks at it more than the outcome of the event as much. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, risk going forward from here, uh, Tahir, you know, also last year we were talking about crude. Now we're talking about politics. Uh, uh, what, to your mind, is the is the biggest risk for, for for the Indian market? Because you know, this this year we have underperformed not just uh, the world markets, but even emerging market peers. Well, I think uh, uh, of course the bigger risk, which is probably still uh, you know uh, not fully discounted is maybe if uh, earnings don't manifest themselves you know uh, this is a year in which once again expectations are fairly high uh, to begin with uh, at the street level uh, of course there have been some signs to suggest that uh, uh, it looks a little bit uh, uh, on course uh, in order you know uh, so at least when you pick up some trends out of the last quarter results one of the a couple of goalposts that you needed to have was one, are you going to see the recovery in some of these uh, corporate sector banks and their profitability? We saw quite a lot of that in uh, many of them. So that trend has started to manifest and uh, we need a little bit more support out of the consumption space uh, going forward uh, for that earnings number to kind of get closer to that uh, expectation. So I think the bigger risk will be that. I think many of the other risks are uh, kind of at some level out of the way, uh, not fully closed. Like for example, global events such as US-China trade will still be something which uh, 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 people will have an eye on. Um, uh, but uh, uh, more than that, I think it will be the fact that do we see at least the earnings trajectory being in the vicinity of 12 to 15 percent, if not 20 percent plus. Uh, if uh, that were not to materialize, uh, then we have a risk on the market. Okay. All right, Tahir, we'll uh, let you go on that note. Thank you very much. Let's see how this plays out as we get into that next big event. Uh, thanks for joining in today. That is a view from Invesco Mutual Fund. Just looking back at the screen again, as I was pointing out, yeah, we're back at the day's low, 10,940, yeah. 950. And Anush, this has been a really swift drop. I mean, you know, back there. Big, big fall happening now. Uh, yeah. uh, so to be even the one which was leading the market recovery, Kotak, is uh, you know swiftly down to 1,300 once again. 
And I think uh, this, this last knock is very interesting because, uh, you know, you thought that you tested 10,980, have recovered, mm. the market went to level. Just pull out Nifty's intraday chart. Uh, the last few minutes have been quite brutal, actually. I mean, just let's take a look at uh, the, the way that stock has moved. Uh, uh, that index has moved rather and uh, if you take a look at some of the individual stocks uh, Lassen and Tubro just pull out that stock uh, Mahindra and Mahindra it's quite interesting because you know we thought that perhaps uh, post numbers there was some buying which was happening in Mahindra and Mahindra that's almost back to the low point of the day that's m and uh, look at that move Maruti as well in fact uh, you know one thought at least I thought that you know autos was one sector which was showing some signs of perhaps bottoming out yeah. what's the biggest sectoral loser today it's the auto, auto. index of course a large part of that is because of uh, Tata Motors mm. but still uh, but uh, even other stocks I mean today if the sheen is off and I show Maruti I, I, completely exactly and you know mm. ITC is down uh, Maruti's uh, of course we've spoken about it but uh, you know Dr. Reddy's uh, Infosys uh, uh, this uh, is very interesting because this once again puts us in that uh, 10,000, uh, you know, 950 zone. Uh, uh, for, for two days, we traded above 11,000. Now back to 10,945. And the, the bank nifty fall is also very interesting. Will you take a